there is a fifth dimension inside this bag of gecko diet. A dimension of sound. A dimension of sight. A dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both pattern and color, of reptiles and genetics. You've just crossed over into the gecko zone. What you are witnessing is the typical behavior of a baby crested gecko. He is completely uninterested in eating crickets. A common problem for many gecko keepers is trying to get their gecko interested at all in eating these insects. However, in a moment, we will journey to another world. A world where baby geckos do enjoy the occasional cricket dinner. Now, I have to warn you, what you are about to see may be considered somewhat disturbing to some, but rest assured, it's just another day in the dimension known as the Gecko Zone. No limits, no ceiling, no What's going on everyone? First, we finally got some new gecko merchandise available. Some new colorations, some updated designs. Check it out, link in description. Now, if you guys are new here, my name is Brian from Guardians of the Geckos and I am a gecko breeder. So, if you wanna see any of our awesome content, make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now so you don't miss any of our future uploads. So, I wanted to shoot this quick little gecko tip video for you all because this is something that I've answered many times in the past before, but more so very recently, I've gotten a few messages online. The question is, hey guys, I'm trying to get my crested gecko to eat crickets and he's completely scared of them or he's not interested. The crickets might be walking all over him. I've tried everything, what can I do? So first, that's a very good question, and it is pretty common, especially if you're working with baby crested geckos. They may have never seen a cricket before, and when you, especially if you throw a bunch in there right away, um, it might be overwhelmed by these little creatures jumping on them, jumping around and everything, and the gecko might freak out. In some cases, the gecko may, be, may even drop its tail. Hopefully not. Now, feeding insects, specifically crickets, to crested geckos is not quite necessary as long as you're feeding the approved complete diets. Of course, we've said it a hundred times, we recommend either Rapashi or Pangea. There's some other good brands out there as well. Um, but as long as you're doing that, you don't have to supplement with crickets. But we personally do recommend supplementing with crickets. What do I mean by that? Well, especially because we're breeders, if we want those baby crested geckos to grow up a little bit faster, will introduce crickets um, about when they're a month old. Now, we only give them a couple crickets a week and at that size, but what that does is it helps to increase the rate of their growth upwards to two to three times faster than if a crested gecko was just on the fruit mix diet. So, essentially it's pretty simple. The more protein in that gecko's diet and calcium, uh, the faster it will grow. Now, when supplementing with crickets, um, I've said this of course before, and it's pretty common knowledge, but for you guys that are new, um, you do wanna make sure you are gut loading the crickets and also dusting them with calcium. Uh, we use Calcium Plus from Rapashi um, before you feed the geckos those insects. Feeding some gut-loaded calcium-dusted crickets to your baby geckos will definitely increase the growth rate, get them to juveniles faster, get those juveniles to adults faster, and it's a great way to also supplement some extra calcium into the diets of your breeding female crested geckos. So especially in those two situations, baby geckos that are growing and female breeding geckos, it's definitely a nice addition to help push some extra proteins and calciums into those geckos' diets. 
Now first, some cricket basics for you all when feeding two crested geckos. So the way we set up everything is we will feed the crested gecko diet one day, and then the next day we will feed the crickets. We don't feed them the same night because we don't want the gecko to basically gorge itself on the cricket and then not touch the uh, Pangea or Rapashi complete diet. So we definitely feed them on different days, that way they eat their diet, and then the next day they will eat the cricket. Every gecko is gonna react a little bit different when first introduced to crickets. And what I mean by that is some may just snatch up the crickets right away. As soon as you throw them in there, they go into hunting mode and they just start jumping at everything they see that moves, right? Some, and like I said, this usually happens in cases where they've never seen a cricket before. You throw the crickets in there and either they just don't care and the cricket just walks around them or they actually get super freaked out by that cricket. So you also wanna make sure you're picking out the right size crickets for your crested gecko or gargoyle gecko. Now I know a general rule many keepers use that seems to work is you wanna pick out crickets that are about the length if not smaller than the length between their eyes. You are minimizing the risk of the gecko potentially choking on that cricket. Now we've never had a gecko choke on a cricket before, um, but to at least help prevent that, that's the method I would use when selecting crickets, um, especially with baby crested geckos. So after you got the crickets, after they've been gut loaded, they've been dusted with calcium, you're ready to feed these crickets to your geckos, right? Now the first thing you want to do is go ahead and get that cricket into the enclosure with the gecko. The gecko may just snatch up that cricket right away, right? Um, so I would just pick out a single cricket at first um, and some people will use even a, a glass container to put the cricket in to help prevent the cricket from climbing out or jumping out um, and allow the gecko to go in and feed on its own or you can just put the cricket in and watch it free roam in the enclosure. Um, especially if you're working with like a shoebox set up like we do for our hatchlings, the cricket's not really gonna go too far. Now, if you have a bioactive terrarium, you may want to not do free range right away because that cricket may hide itself in some corner and then months go by and before you know it, you have a giant cricket walking around in there larger than the size of your gecko. <laughs> so this is what you wanna do if your gecko still refuses to eat crickets. So let's get the gecko over here. And this is the same crested gecko that we used in the intro video, where literally you see the cricket walking in front of his face. It sits there for, I kid you not, like 10 seconds. We have here our calcium dusted crickets with Rupashi Calcium Plus. So what you're gonna do is get one of these little crickets and they're super small, so give me a second here. All right, got a little guy. As you can see, he is super tiny. So this is what I meant earlier when I said uh, this might be considered disturbing to some people because we are gonna sadly behead this little tiny cricket. Literally, we will decapitate him. So you can use tongs if you want. We're just gonna use our fingertips right here. What you're gonna do is literally get the head of the cricket and you're going to pinch off just the very tip of his head, right? And so now you have a headless cricket. So now that you got the headless cricket, we're gonna go ahead and for camera purposes, we're gonna pick up the gecko, but I personally recommend just leaving the gecko in his own enclosure. And you're just gonna put the little cricket juice, let's see the juice coming out the end of the cricket there, if you can see it. We're gonna put that juice coming out of the body just right up to the gecko's nose, right? And if he starts, oh dang, that was like too good of an example. I swear this gecko has never eaten crickets before. Um, so that was the exact response we wanted. Um, as soon as you get the juice of the cricket up to the gecko's nose, uh, typically they will smell um, or sense that cricket and it usually triggers a feeding response where all of a sudden gecko goes into hunting mode and hunting mode and just snatches out that cricket right away. So good job, little guy. There you guys go. That was like literally the best example I could have shown you on the first take. Swear to God, that was the first one. Um, yeah, perfect example. There you go. Cricket or gecko just ate its first cricket. 
So typically moving forward, once you introduce that first cricket to the gecko, um, they are much more willing to start eating crickets on their own. And it definitely jump starts their little growth spurts as babies and helps them grow a lot faster at that point. If this video helped you and your gecko out, go ahead and smash that like button for us. Comment below, let us know your thoughts, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so we can see you in the next video.